to introduce our speakers, please welcome the Vice President of External Affairs for AT&T Ohio, Rob Reynolds. Rob? Hey, good evening. Uh, I'm excited to be here tonight. This is a great idea for a forum, don't you think? Yeah. We have a superlative group of leaders, each of whom have served this community as mayor. You have extensive biographical information in your program, so I'm just going to provide you a brief introduction for each. Dana Buck Reinhardt served as the 50th mayor of our great city. From 1984 to 1992, his leadership was colorful, dynamic, <laughs> and, and came at a time when Columbus was evolving into a major Midwestern city. Please welcome Buck Reinhardt. <laughs> Greg Lashakta led the community through much of the last decade of the 20th century, serving from 1992 to 2000. Under his leadership, the city continued to evolve, sprouting glitzy shopping centers, professional sports, and emerged as a large, modern, metropolitan area. Please welcome Greg Lashakta. Taking the reins in 2000, the first mayor in the 21st century, Mike Coleman set a goal of increasing downtown living, business, industry, and jobs. His leadership has spurred revitalization and new development of neighborhoods, downtown parks, condos, apartments, and a nightlife that he says will create swagger for Columbus. <laughs> Please welcome the Honorable Mayor of Columbus, Michael B. Coleman. To lead our distinguished panel, we have a well-known and well-loved television personality. She has worked in a journalist in Columbus during the terms of all three of these mayors. Please welcome the host of NBC4's Daytime Columbus, Gail Hogan. Hi, guys. You know, when you say that you've worked as a reporter under all three mayors, you don't know if you want to sound experienced or if it just sounds like you're old. I can't. <laughs> this is like my dream. <laughs> the things I could say, but I won't. The things I could say, but I won't. And I have a personal tie, really, to each one. Mayor um, Buck and I were, when I still live in Clintonville, would see him at the Whetstone Park, would see him at the Kroger store. He's one of the first people who knew I was pregnant for the very first time because I couldn't keep it a secret and I had to tell somebody and I was at the city hall and he's now 25, so there. <laughs> it's a long time ago. Long time ago. <laughs> and Greg Lashutka actually gave my husband Dan his very first job out of law school. You hired him when you were a city attorney. You must have done something right because now he's a judge. So thank you very much for whatever guidance that was. He earned it. He earned it. And then, of course, Mayor Coleman and I, we lived in Toledo together. He actually, the mayor, grew up on the street where my mom did as well. Isn't that amazing? Ooh. Prospect Avenue. And we discovered that in a conversation. He went to an all-boys school. I went to an all-girls school. I'm sure we met each other at dances, although he never did ask me to dance. But. <laughs> and I don't think you were a wallflower. I just don't see that. <laughs> Uh, we are celebrating 200 years, which is wonderful, and it gives us time to look back at where we've come, how far we've come, and as we look back, that's going to be the first question to all of you, and I will start with Mayor Buck, since you were the, the first one, or do you go back the furthest? I'm the old gray mayor. Mayor. <laughs> What do you think in the past has contributed to today's success in Columbus? The biggest single thing number one on the charts over everything else has been the fact that Columbus, through a moment of in incredible wisdom, unified and maintained the entire water and sewer system in central Ohio. Because that gave Columbus the opportunity to grow through the communities and not be surrounded by the suburbs and become the center of the 
core, if you will, that rots like so many other cities in the country. In fact, all of the other top 25 cities except for Indianapolis uh, and Orlando, I think, those are the two, uh, everybody else is surrounded by suburbs. Not us. We surround the suburbs. I had nothing to do with that because I wasn't even here. I was in the Marine Corps at the time. What years that, was this? Do you know? That here? would have been back in 50, 54, 54, 54, 56, right. somewhere right. in that time frame. Right. Not romantic, but important. <laughs> Not oh, exciting, critical. but... Critical. And Greg maintained that. Mike has maintained that. And even though he's come under a lot of pressure, I maintained it. Tom Moody maintained it for 12 years. Uh, Sensenbrenner started it. And today, we are vibrant, healthy, and growing. And because of that unification of water and sewer. Interesting. Okay, Mike? Well... I think uh, um, it's the people of Columbus. Uh, I think the people of Columbus are unique, unlike any other group of people in any other part of the country. Uh, the people of Columbus are, uh, are, 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 I think we have a, a, a tagline now, open and smart. We've always been open to new ideas, open to diversity, open to uh, solving problems, open to different kinds of people. We have a a German village. We have a, a strong African American community, a strong GLBT community, uh, a growing Latino community, and a community that comes together in tough times. Uh, and and what's so unique about the city is when when things get tough, whether it be financial, whether it be uh, social issues, the people of Columbus have the ability to unite and come together to keep the city together. Uh, to keep moving forward, not backwards. Uh, and it really is the people of our great city. It's the people that have made the difference in our community. From way back to from, now. From, from all the way back to the time when Lucas Sullivan put his <laughs> stake in the ground. And, and I go back to that because Lucas Sullivan, and we all know this, who uh, founded uh, our city at Frank in Franklinton, uh, his wife, he and his wife, adopted a little black boy by the name of Arthur Boak. And this is back in the early 1800s when uh, African Americans were slaves in other parts of the country. In Columbus, they were part of the family. That's how we got started. So it's the people of our city that have made the difference throughout the years. And, and after we're all gone, it'll be the people of Columbus that keep us united and growing from this, from going to the future. Absolutely. Greg, what are your thoughts? What was in the past that were, has worked for us to make us a success now? Well, I will endorse what Buck said, and I'll endorse what Mike said. Fair enough. But I'll add another layer. And it's interesting because I've had a chance to reflect on this, as we all do, because that's what mayors do, whether they're in the office or not. <laughs> and uh, a year ago last spring, Henry Cisneros, who was a great HUD secretary, in my opinion, and a friend to Columbus, uh, invited me to co-chair uh, a panel in Detroit on shrinking cities. And those are every other major city in Ohio except for us. Hmm. Yep. And many others, Detroit included. And I listened uh, carefully to what went on, and I would suggest the following has made a huge difference. In the, in the broader spectrum, there's three legs of the stool, commerce, and there's government, and there's a not-for-profit world, which our population that Mike had talked about kind of operates through. And we are now in a period in America where there's huge distrust of financial institutions and some, uh, some financial institutions and some government programs as we see these, these fringe efforts uh, looking at why they're not working and raising issues. In Columbus, those three legs of the stool have been generally selfless in their perspective on what's best for Columbus. And uh, currently you see what's taking place with the, uh, uh, the corporate community coming together on uh, uh, efforts and the partnership who are looking at it, working with a cohesive uh, governmental uh, layer at the county and the city, working with the state, uh, working with the not-for-profit world as we sit here. And that has all contributed substantially, 
and that has not been the case of virtually all the cities that we reviewed. One or more of those other three legs of the stool in other cities got greedy, got uh, uh, singularly focused on what's uh, not in the best interest overall, but what was on a personal agenda or a personal entity agenda. Very That's not our hallmark. So we have a lot to celebrate. 200 years, a lot to celebrate. This is it. 200 yeah. years. It is amazing when you think about it. Yeah. So this is where we're from. This is where we are. Where are we going? How, how big do you think Columbus will get? How big do you think we should get? Do we want to be a megacity? And I'll start backwards. Greg, I'll start with you this time. Well, I think we know in America how to have cities like Columbus work well. And if you look at some of the larger cities, uh, they're under some major stress. I think there's limits to where our city can go, but there's no limits to where our region can go. Mm -hmm. And that region, in large part, can be uh, promoted by the very uh, issue Buck raised on Sensor and Brenner's shared services. We're not landlocked, but we also share services so the surrounding communities can grow as well. So I prefer to celebrate Columbus, but really we should be celebrating the entire region because those have all prospered with a healthy core city and suburbs and even counties one and two away from us who are vital, and I think that is unlimited. Okay. Mayor? Okay. What's, where are we going? Is that the question? We're going in the future. Are right. we growing too big? Are we going to be, is that what we should look for? Are we going in the right direction? Well, I think we're going in the right direction. Thank you. <laughs> well stated. <laughs> there's, there's no doubt about that. Uh, Touche. Now, with respect to the size of the city, I, you know, I, I do think that it won't be long before we are in within the city limits of a million people. Uh, we're about 800,000, so shy under 800,000 right at this very moment. Uh, and before you know it, we will be um, uh, at a million or more. Uh, we are now larger than Detroit. Uh, we're twice the size of Cleveland. Uh, Cincinnati is about a third of our size, and we we'll continue to grow. And uh, our growth is based upon that policy that, that uh, uh, Buck talked about, but it's also based upon the quality of life that Greg talked about, everybody working together to build a quality of life that people want to come and enjoy. Uh, and, and quality of life is critical in the growth of a city. So people aren't leaving here, they continue to come here, so that's a sign that we're doing the right thing uh, okay, but over the years. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no I'll let you in. Are, are we going to get so big that we're not manageable or navigable? You know, Because uh, that's what people like about Columbus. Well, um, you know, we do need to some, do some things to address the growth of our city. Uh, one of them, I think, is mass transit. Uh, down the road at some point. We need to focus more on that. Uh, but uh, I, I agree with Greg in the sense that it's important for uh, uh, the region to understand we have to work together. Uh, because as the city grows, the region grows. And uh, I have, and I know Greg did, and I know Buck did as well, work really hard at creating a, a regional environment, a regional effort here. Uh, we have actually been successful in sharing services among some of our jurisdictions. Uh, one of the things I think that I've been trying to do and, and, and with, with some success, and we still have work to do, is to address the growth of jobs in our region. Uh, you know, one of the things we talk about regularly, you know, Buck's talked about it, Greg's talked about it, is as we grow, we must grow our job base. Uh, and that our jurisdictions should not be taking jobs from each other. Okay. We should be looking to grow our jobs together as a region uh, and work on that uh, more than we work on taking this job across the street to Columbus or to some other jurisdiction. Right. So uh, we got a lot to do uh, in the future. We are going in the right direction. I can give you my menu of things we have to do. Well, we need Mayor Buck to talk, okay, too. All so. right, okay, <laughs> all right. So let's have Buck talk. This is an election year. <laughs> I, uh, um, Buck, what do you think about us moving forward and how in the direction that we're moving? Look, it's bottom line is simple.
This is a great place to work, live, and raise a family. Period. End. If it wasn't, we would be a dwindling city. We would be in the rust belt. But we're not. We're in the, we're the sunspot in the frost belt. Okay? So, uh, there you go. <laughs> I'm very interested in, in Mike's menu because I want to either add or delete some things. You won't, uh, you, you but, won't be deleting. You might add some things to it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this is a great place to live, work, and raise a family. Uh, you cannot say that, with all due respect, about Detroit or some of the other similarly situated Midwestern cities. Um, and if you, if you came into the airport in Columbus, your first time here, and you said to the cab driver, Mr. Cab Driver, here's 20 bucks. Take me to your nearest slum. Where are they going to go? Short North? I don't think so. Okay? German Village area? No. I mean, you got to stretch. You do the same trick in Chicago, Detroit. Cleveland, I mean, I could go through a long list of them, but Columbus is different. Yeah, it's because of the water policy and the sewer policy adopted before we were a good idea on the political map, and yeah, it's because of the quality of people. You're absolutely right, and yeah, it's because of the, I think, the political leadership that people put in place here because they are very concerned about it. Uh, doesn't mean they don't have blips and ups and downs. But in the big picture, if you're going to say to your kids, um, I'm going to say to Jonathan sitting back there, where do you want to raise your little girl? He's going to say Columbus. One of the things that... I'm sorry? We'll have Q&A in just a moment. We will have Q&A in just a moment. And I want you to be the first one to the microphone. <laughs> Okay. Martha will be the first one. <laughs> so, Greg, you alluded to this earlier that one of the reasons why this city is successful is because we have a working relationship not just with the region but with community leaders, with business leaders, with city leaders, with state leaders. I get the feeling that you all in other cities that you know of and city leaders that you have met, that's not always the case. And not. do you really think it's that strong here and that we have that core? Yeah. Mayor Mike Coleman. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we'll move on, because I don't want to get to the menu. I'm afraid of the menu. <laughs> Greg? You no, know, to the, uh, the city in, in, in Cleveland, uh, it's hard to recruit credible people. They just went through a devastating corruption series of trial at the county and, and spilling over to the city. Columbus has never had that. We have a few problems, uh, but those have never risen to a major question about the integrity of, of government. Nope. Uh, we see cor the corporate community, even as they get international in scope, which we want, as we have Fortune 500 companies and companies like the Grange. I mean, we are an insurance capital right behind Hartford and, and uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Those are great jobs, and as Grange grows, it helps the community. And that's true for all the other insurance, and so we need to educate the talent to make that work. So we have educational systems, that are in place with about 125, 150,000 students a year. We have a selfless business community who works hard at that, contributing dollars and talent. Because I look at, uh, uh, I, I'm not gonna get carried away with mentioning names if I can avoid it, but look at the riverfront, which was created by uh, a thought with Jim Cunk and John Christie and delivered by Mike Coleman at AEP. And Dale Heideloff is a name I will mention because he led that effort, but it took a while to make it work. We have a long-term view on what's best interest for us. And for the arts, we've, I'm not sure I like the swagger idea, but I like the idea of, <laughs> of, of, of having a live for all five generations to get excited about the arts <coughs> and music and sport. Those are all important. And it's been a hallmark, either first, second, or third tier for all three of us. And those who preceded us, uh, we've changed it a bit and tweaked it, but it has, um, uh, it has worked to our benefit. Uh, so the person living here who just really wants a fair shake, to Mike's point, they don't want undue
favoritism. They want a fair shake, and they're willing to work hard and raise their families and educate them. And if we deliver on that, they're going to give back tenfold, and they have over generations. But do you see the same thing when you were there, the community coming together with business? You with state? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Look, what a great opportunity to be mayor of Columbus. You don't eat burp and go home, okay? Number one. Number two, you See why we used to say Buck was a soundbite a day? <laughs> I had the, I was yeah. blessed with Jim Heyer as school superintendent, John Christie as president of the, of the Chamber of Commerce, Jerry Hammond as president of city council. I mean, you'd have to really screw up to screw up. <laughs> uh, and what does that say about the community, the business, like Greg's saying, the business community, the philanthropic community, the electorate in Columbus? It says volumes. Oh, God, it was a, it was a great time. No, I think we've got a great future. <laughs> Period end. Mayor, you're still mayor. Do you enjoy being mayor? I love being mayor. It's, uh, and I've, I've been mayor now 13 years. Oh, and, my God. Uh, <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's been a, a wonderful experience. Um, I truly love it. I, I love the city. I love the job. Uh, at one time, I thought about running for higher office, and then I thought better. Uh, <laughs> you that, are in the why, highest why, That's right. That this is the best no, job, sir. the best opportunity one could ever have. And to go to a governor's office or some someplace else, uh, frankly, for me, would be kind of like a demotion. Because yep. in this city, you can walk around. You, you know what you've done. You know what you got to do. And, and you uh, see results, and you and like you see, that. And you see the results, and you know where you have to improve, because the public lets you know that oh, right man. away. Right, Buck? Absolutely. Look, uh, <laughs> the average person doesn't think they can get the President of the United States on the phone. Okay? The average person doesn't think they can get the governor on the phone. But by God, the average person <laughs> knows they can get the mayor on the phone because he just lives down the street. And he'll, he will take his phone call. So that's the difference. I mean, it was it Greg the best and I have talked about this so many times. Mayor is feet on the ground, boots on the ground. It's the best, the best job there is in oh. public life is to be a, the mayor of this city, yeah. of the Not city of Columbus. City. Not any city, this but the mayor of the city of Columbus. Absolutely. And I've loved every minute of it. 13 years, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't really look any worse for the wear either, Buck. Looks pretty He's handling it very well. He's handling it well, yeah. You should see the inside. <laughs> Well, this brings me to, you're all joking around. Do you all like each other? Would you go have a beer together? We already have, many times. <laughs> and I bet a lot of problems are solved. Not tonight, Gail. Yeah. I didn't say tonight, but we have many times. Yeah, uh, I like these two, two gentlemen. Uh, they're, they're great guys. Uh, they helped build the city during their time. Uh, and Buck did his thing, and then Greg helped build the city in his time, and I took over, and I helped build the city during my time. And whoever the next person is, whenever that will be. <laughs> you know, Mike. They'll build the city there. <laughs> Mike would make a great Republican. <laughs> oh, man. You'll survive. Yeah. Remember, when I was mayor, he was counsel aide to Ben Esther. That's right. Okay? That's right. Oh, you're putting right. him back and in his place? Well, no. Is that <laughs> yeah. Gail, I helped raise him. <laughs> and I think he owes me. Don't give your age, man. Don't give your age. I'm, I'm the old gray mayor. <laughs> but because you all have had that or have that job as mayor that few people have, right. and you all still live here, do you ever consult with each other? Would you pick up the phone? Or have you asked ideas from the other? Greg? You know, it's interesting. When you leave, you should leave. But uh, but you really can't. <laughs> no, no, that's not true. Because you should leave. And my, my deal, 
and I said it to, to Mike, uh, unless it's unethical or immoral, I'm not going to complicate his life. And I think I've lived up to that promise. And to Buck's credit, he did the same thing. And I saw that with Tom Moody as he went through. And we may disagree about issues or policies, but it is in a respectful way between all of us because it is such an honor to be mayor and the public deserves us to respect that position and not do what happens in some other cities. Uh, I mean, what has taken place in Detroit politically? And I think the world of the current mayor, Dave Bing, who is a wonderful man under horrible situations. His predecessor uh, was prosecuted criminally. And so that is not the character that Mike Coleman brings or Buck brings, and hopefully I didn't bring. And we, we try to live to that standard that is acceptable and, 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 and responsive to the needs of the public. Uh, I do know that Mike and I talked several times after I left and went to Nationwide during tough times, and we talked candidly, and those will always remain private. Uh, Buck gave good advice when I would ask him, and you want to respond when asked, but not put your nose in when you shouldn't. Exactly. Got it. Yeah. So, but I have drawn upon these two gentlemen in the past. Now, I remember, I remember this very well. I, I, I thought about this as I was running over here late. Uh, when um, on 9-11, September 11th, 2001, our nation was under attack. There was a plane that had entered the Ohio airspace coming up through Columbus towards Cleveland and turned back around the Pennsylvania crash. Uh, the world was in disarray uh, and we in Columbus were uh, trying to address it because we did not know if we were going to be the next ones attacked. I got a phone call from Greg Lashutka. He said, Mike, anything I can do. I appreciated that moment, very much so. And then on another occasion, uh, I felt that the city was in crisis and, and I needed help. And, uh, and I thought it was time that we raise the income tax. And I called Buck Reinhardt. I said, Buck, I need your help. And he was there, and I appreciated that. And then when we started talking about the ideas about the bicentennial, uh, how important it was to the city, it was time to have some swagger, <laughs> right? That's what the bicentennial is all about. <laughs> Believe me, we needed it, Greg. <laughs> uh, uh, I asked these two gentlemen to step up to take uh, a leadership right up front, saying we need to celebrate our history, celebrate where we come from and use this year as a launching pad for the future. And without hesitation, uh, each stepped up and said, we'll be part of this in any way you want. And I've seen them in all kinds of events, and, and, and they really help uh, solidify the need to celebrate our history and our founding and our heritage. Got it. We are now going to open this up to questions. So if anyone has a question, there's the microphone. And as we're waiting for that first person, uh, Mayor, what does swagger look like? I just want to know what the... <laughs> it's, not, it's not what it looks like. It's, it, swagger is the confidence to do what is necessary to achieve. And for far too long, the city, among our own residents, True, I know where us you're going. Cowtown. Yep. We're not. We haven't been, and we gotta get away from that thought. And if that means doing something radical like having a little swagger, <laughs> then that's okay. Uh, I, I agree with the definition, just the term. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was Mayor Sensenbrenner's name? Spizzerinkum. That's right. It's the same thing. That's not very good either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> but guess what? It worked. <laughs> all right, all right. Go ahead, did, Bill. Uh, yeah, Phil Sorrentino. As somebody who was born here in this town, thank you. And somebody who's, I've worked with every one of you, thank you. Um, it's been said during uncertain times you weed out the weak players and the strong ones widen the gap. And there's no doubt these are uncertain times. 
What can you suggest as citizens of this city we can do to, to first of all, be stronger ourselves and maybe be stronger to help the city? Any particular order? Uh, we'll, we'll let the, uh, the most handsome go first. <laughs> Mike? Go ahead, Buck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the old gray man. <laughs> Greg, I'll, I'll give you my view. That, you know, this is on the eve of one of the most important elections I think we have ever had federally. There's other offices running as well. And I think it's a very important time to civilly have a discussion about what our DNA is about. And we've discussed the positive DNA in Columbus. We've discussed how important elected officials are and how important business is. And, and I think getting back to some basic civic lessons about what being a citizen is about wouldn't be a bad thing. We don't teach it as much as we should in schools. It doesn't happen as much around a dinner table. We take for granted an awful lot. And I will tell you, there's an awful lot of people who are sacrificing a lot, particularly in the service. And we don't even understand what's going on in that world unless you have a relative or a family member going on. But how all that fits together and voting responsibility and looking at candidates and looking at issues, those are fundamental issues that prior generations gave us the gift we have now. And if we don't go back to that in a more purposeful way and meaningful way, we're going to lose everything. Um, I'd say I'd put on three things, and, and one of them is voting. Continue to vote, uh, and this is a critical election coming up, and uh, and it's important for everybody to vote, even on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> That's settled. That's settled. <laughs> now, number two, number two, uh, volunteer. Uh, it, what I think distinguishes the city of Columbus from many other cities is we have a great sense of, of giving and volunteering. There's an effort going on now called Volunteer Challenge uh, in celebration of our bicentennial. Just this past weekend, there were 5,000 volunteers going into rougher areas of the city. Parsons Avenue, some other places, and, and trying to fix it up, clean it up, paint it up, beautify it. Uh, volunteering is very, very important. Uh, and our city is only as good as the weakest among us, and we have to strengthen the weak and weakest among us. And the third thing is voice. Speak up. Speak up. Articulate your concerns, your opinions, and, and, and always demonstrate that this is a democratic community in the broader sense, not the partisan <laughs> sense. I took it uh, that way. Yes. <laughs> and uh, it's important for people to voice their point of view. And it's not always on Twitter, because uh, that's limited, but to actually communicate with your brothers and sisters in your neighborhood. Because all too often, people who live next door to each other don't know who they are. Get to know them. Get to know the people in your block. Get to know the people in your community. But voice and articulate. That's a great answer. Uh, Buck? You got any I thoughts? have a Twitter. <laughs> you do? Yeah. I want to. I Twitter wanna. at Buck Reinhardt. All right. <laughs> Here's what I think. Okay. <laughs> uh, I have an opinion <laughs> on everything. <laughs> Far better is it to dare mighty things when glorious triumphs, even though checkered with failure, than to take rank with those poor spirits that neither suffer much nor enjoy much, for they live in the gray twilight that knows <laughs> not victory or defeat. Who said that? Teddy Roosevelt. And it's still true today. So if I had a message to give to the people that I love, absolutely, unhesitatingly, that make up the residents of Columbus, that would be it. Good. Thank you. And Buck, can I add that I don't think anyone would ever accuse you of living in the gray. I, no. <laughs> Next. George O'Donnell. Hey, George. Uh, each of you had nuggets of wisdom as to what Columbus should have in the future. Mayor Coleman, uh, you hit the, the nail on the head, sir, with the idea of mass transit. 
to make Metropolitan Columbus click, we need to have all of the surrounding communities, counties involved in this. And I'm wondering how the three of you can put your heads together with your powers of influence to cause that to happen in the next 20 years. You can handle that. <laughs> softball. The softball. softball. Uh, we'd all work together. <laughs> I think it's uh, one of the great challenges of our city in the time to come that uh, we do, and I've always felt this way, and uh, we do, I think, need to have uh, uh, rail in the city of Columbus. Uh, if not rail, then, then better mass transit. Uh, and that mass transit isn't just transportation for poor people, <laughs> but for all people. And we have to figure that out. And uh, uh, so, uh, to get there is will take longer than I have today, uh, but it's something that I care a great deal about and something that we'll be working with CODA on. Go ahead, sir. I really don't have a question. I have a statement. All of you gentlemen I know very well because in my 20-year tenure as president and chief executive officer of the Columbus Urban League, we always work together. I've said to this to you privately, but I've never said it publicly. I want to thank you for what you did for the African American community, specifically the Columbus Urban League in those times of crisis. All of you have done something that we can't talk about right now, but you all have done something. And on behalf of the board staff and members of the Columbus Urban League, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Martha Trout. I've worked with each one of you in various ways. Um, when you were talking about should Columbus get any bigger, and was it big enough, uh, the size, I couldn't help but think about some cities who have put together smaller communities under a metropolitan government, and I'm sure that you've known some in your tenure. I believe Louisville is one, but I could be mistaken. What do you think now about that policy as a form of area government? I'd be glad to start. Go for it. All right, Martha. First of all, thank you for asking the question. And it's always been a pleasure working with you. <laughs> but let me just <laughs> tell you. Go for the butt. But <laughs> we already have metropolitan government in these areas court system, welfare system, solid waste disposal system. Mike was talking about transportation. Well, we're not quite there yet, but CODA go doesn't stop at Whitehall and turn around and go back through Columbus and don't serve that community. So there, everything from the administration of the court system to the administration of the welfare system to the federal programs that are administered at the county level, we already have it. So what you're talking about is let's take it to the police and fire level. That's not going to happen in our lifetime. Forget it. Why? Because the people in Bexley like having their police department. And frankly, the people in Columbus like having theirs. And, the, and you may say it's inefficient, but if that's what the people want, our job is not to tell them what they should want. Our job is to deliver what they do want. Now, there is no Republican or Democrat way to pick up the garbage. You either pick it up or you don't. And if you don't, you're out. <laughs> Same with snow removal. Snow falls on the rich and the poor, the black and the white, the young and the old, all the same. Move it. <laughs> That's what people want. So those kind of things you can talk about doing countywide. And guess what? We started it in 1984 with snow removal. Why? Because I didn't want our stupid snow plows going down Hamilton Road and stopping and turning around and going back the other way and leaving the rest of Hamilton Road because that's in Gahanna covered with snow. So John Circle and I got together and worked out a plan that he's perfected, he, Mike has perfected much better to where we all work together to get that done. Metropolitan Park System doesn't stop at city limits. I mean, it covers all, like, 17 counties 
in central Ohio. I could go on and on, but there is great unification of government right here, right now. Much of it modeled after what happened in Indianapolis under Bill Hudnut, uh, but also modeled on other communities across the country. It's like Columbus just picked the best and stuck it here. And when we created the Solid Waste Authority, when we regionalized the airport and got it out from under City Hall, regionalized the zoo, got that out from under City Hall, and I could go on and on. What we did was we went that way. And that's where we're going. And it's, but we're not going to tell people that you can't have your own fire department, you can't have your own police department. They've got to tell the politicians they don't want their own police department. Good luck selling that. Uh, in Franklin County. So that's my response to you. We have it, but we have it in the areas that we that don't carry the high profile. Jane, are you going to wrap this up for us? Um, another question. Uh, Jane Scott, I don't think I've ever been more proud of the Columbus Metropolitan Club. Thank you very much for being here. And they all said yes, and they all took our phone calls, as you can see. So my question's a very, very easy question. I know there are a lot of people in the audience that have worked for one and or all three of you, and I'd like to know who in this audience has worked for the mayors. Would you like to stand up? I know there's a couple here. I yeah. know there's a lot. Oh, I, there's a lot. I know a bunch there's of a lot. Come on, get up. Jerry get up, Warren, get up. Fran Ryan, yeah. Kathy Kerr. Martha Trout. Oh, okay. Bill. <laughs> Thank you. Allie. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I wanted to do that because I think that says an awful lot about you folks as leaders that so many of your staff wanted to be here this evening and um, just to be in the audience, to hear what you might have to say and to respect your leadership. So thank you very, very much. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. If, I, if I could. Please. I want to follow up with Jane, and I, I don't know if Mike and Buck want to do the same thing, but uh, I've observed it that you know, the, the mayors in the spot are in the spotlight, good or bad. We've got a bully pulpit that we can use. And, and the reality is, though, that if it wasn't for great people making personal sacrifices often to join the uh, purpose for Mike Coleman, Buck Reinhardt, or myself, we would never be able to deliver on that. And there's an image of some that public officials and government workers are eight to five people, and I will tell you that is rarely the case. And when it comes about, there's a lot of things that look easy, but so much hard work takes place. And I want to join in the gratitude that is expressed to those people who have joined me, joined Mike, joined Buck, and I think that we would all echo that. We, we didn't do it ourselves, mm -mm. but a lot of selfless work by great people made a difference, and the city has benefited. So thank you all. Well, well stated, Greg. Well stated. Sir? Except that I did the Ohio Penitentiary all by myself. Nobody else will go with you. Uh, he's gonna, he has the scars. I can't get a single staff person to help me out. You have the scars to prove it. Low but, and deck and buck, just going so, through. But look what's there today. <laughs> go ahead, sir. All right. Hi, my name is Dana Mack, and uh, my question for you, all three of you, is when you look at your tenures, and they've all been great tenures, but is there one thing that, uh, as you left office, that you wish you could have done? And Mayor Coleman, I might want you to go last. I want you to ask, tell us what one thing you still want to accomplish while you're in office. But again, one thing that you wish you could have accomplished while you're still in office, what would that be? You want to start, we'll Greg, or you want me to start? Left. You, go you got to go last. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Buck. One thing. Dana, uh, we... You can't finish what you start. I mean, you don't start off in January 1984 and say, I'm going to do these 25 things. You start off saying, this is the where the city ought to be going. And so, like Tom Moody gave me the trash plan. I didn't start it. Um, and I don't mean this pejoratively. My job was to make it work. But that was his dream. Tom Moody gave me capital south and um, and I was blessed to have that opportunity uh, but I didn't start it my job was to f 
try to finish it. So every mayor, now I gave Greg Lasheka Jim Jackson. <laughs> uh, uh, but every mayor tries. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> We're going where we don't want to go. No. We don't want to go there. But every mayor, <laughs> I, every mayor, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Every mayor <laughs> Sorry, starts what you off. think you ought to start and <laughs> depend upon your successor to finish the job. And so finishing the job is not yet done at the airport. It's not yet done at the solid waste authority. It's not yet done with the sewer system. But you do what your part is along the way. Now, the exceptions to the rule are things that really mean something to you. The Columbus 500, uh, 1992 celebration. That was Columbus 200. <laughs> Ameriflora. Uh, I mean, those That's kind right. of things start and stop in this period of time. But the life of the city goes on. And I think your job, or my job as mayor, is to make sure and turn over to Greg a city that's a, hopefully a little bit better mechanically, um, financially, mm -hmm. economically than it was when I got it. And then it's then he picks up and takes it from there, aside from my joke. Uh, but, but there are a lot of things that you don't see that, I mean, I didn't build the brewery district, but I just started it. I didn't build Short North. I sh got it started. Well, look where it is today. Well, Mike Coleman's there. And he's going to be mayor until he's 80. So <laughs> I'm going to be mayor so, until I'm as old as you are. <laughs> <laughs> See the wear and tear you get on this job? So, Dana, does that make any sense? So the batons passed to me in a very uh, Jay Leno-like way, which Buck always had the ability. And each of us have distinctive styles. But I think that is good. Um, I remember when I was wrestling with, do I do a third term or not? And uh, uh, I really wanted to. And yet I looked in the mirror, because there was a, as a Republican with a Democratic council, you only get every four years to make that decision, unless you want to leave with a little bit of a cloud. So that was the time. And I had great agony going over that, because I, there was more things that I wanted to get done, just like Buck had more things that he wanted to get done. And I really appreciate and want to thank him for teeing up things, because I believe Ameriflora was a wonderful experience for us in many ways. The resuscitated uh, park we have in conservatory is a world-class facility that went through a lot of pain, and, and, and Buck, <laughs> Buck teed it up. And uh, I, I see John Wolfe. We went through 1992. We went through Sun of Heaven. I mean, we were doing our coming out with Ameriflora as well. It wore us out. And, and yet we survived that and had more confidence that we could do things that spilled over. But I wanted to do some things, and I finally said, you know, I do these things in eight-year chunks, and I talked to uh, some people, both mayors and others, and the advice was, you'll never finish it. And once that sunk in by some good advice by some people, and I talked to other mayors, around the country who I really respect, Glenda Hood in Orlando and uh, 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 Bob, uh, I forget his last name, in Fort Worth, Texas and, and, and others. And you should leave on your own terms because a lot of politicians, when they don't leave on their own terms, have the voters tell them, this is on your terms. <laughs> yeah. And it's not quite as good. And it, in, there needs to be a positive experience in all we do and have a, a good feeling. And I, I'm an eight-year chunk of a guy, and I owed it to my wife, Catherine, and the family, and we had you know, another good chapter in our lives. So to your question, there were certain things that were queued up, and I want to compliment, as I did Buck, Mike, because he tweaked them. He got others involved. It's <coughs> high energy to get it done, and we are a better city, and I think that Speaking about Buck and, and Mike, they're leaving the campground a little better using the old Boy Scout phrase. And for that, we're all better off. B it, I'm sorry, this was going to be the last question, but Mayor, I want to hear what you'd like to see done that you have not done yet. Well, you know, uh, uh, 
the thing, I think the next big thing that I want to uh, engage in is education. Uh, and I've been thinking about it, and I think I'll talk more about it in, in the days and weeks to come. Uh, uh, it's an area that is critical to <coughs> the survival of the city, uh, to our economic development, to uh, the future of our businesses, the future of our neighborhoods, and the future of our children. And uh, I've started giving some great thought to it. Gentlemen, I want to thank you for being here this evening. And I know the audience joins me in thanking you for your service to our city. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Well, well, hey, you still got it, both of you guys. Fun. <laughs> fun. This has been fun. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Oh, Great absolutely. job. I think that was a lot of fun, and it probably demonstrates to all of us uh, how fortunate we are to have had and have these three gentlemen in public service. Uh, it's the reason we are the growing community in Ohio. Uh, so thank you, all three of you, very much. Wanted to let you know that the bar is open till 8.15, so you don't have to worry. <laughs> There's music and food and all of that out there. But before you go, I want to thank our evening's host, Grange Insurance, our sponsors, AT&T, NBC4, American Dairy Association Mideast, and Prime Engineering. Thank you, Buck, Greg, Mike, thank you very much, and Gail, thank you. Thank you all for coming. Come to lunch. <laughs>